Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Wednesday. I keep forgetting what day of the week the days are this week, but I, I believe today is Wednesday. So um, <laughs> welcome to Wednesday on our show. Today we are going to be talking about Oprah's Book Club. So as it turns out, Oprah's Book Club has a bunch of controversies that we need to discuss. The biggest one that we'll focus on is going to be James Frey and the A Million Little Pieces memoir, because that's the, the big one. It doesn't look like The Secret was one of her book club selections. However, I do know that she, um, I'm pretty sure she promoted the book in some way. So we can talk about that too. Um, we can go a little bit into the controversy with American Dirt, although that was like, that was the most recent controversy that happened. And um, yeah, so that one was, uh, that one was a, a mess all over the book internet, booktube, book Twitter, all that. And then um, there's another one that I actually didn't know about before this of a guy named Jonathan Franzen, which uh, it seems that he, the controversy wasn't about his book, but he was just an asshole about his book being chosen because I guess he didn't like Oprah. So We'll talk about all of that in just a minute, but first I want to say hi to everyone in the chat and thank you all for coming this morning. Hold up. Ugh, I'm really exhausted. Yesterday I worked out too hard and I'm still tired, um, but I'm trying to be stronger than RK so I can beat him in a boxing match, which will take a lot because uh, he's got a head start on me. Cher, did we forget to monetize? Uh, if so, I will monetize right now. Thank you, Cher, with the reminder, helping us make money on this channel. Um, I will take a minute to monetize while I say good morning to Molly and good morning to Eva. I'm glad you guys are both here right now. Caroline says, morning, haven't been able to participate in the last two streams. Do I still get a car? You can absolutely still get a car. And by car, I mean book, because on Friday we're doing our book giveaways as both a celebration of having hit 100 episodes and also for Oprah week because she does giveaways. I can also go through some of the stuff that I'm planning to give away this week. Um, and you guys can let me know if if those are good prizes or if I, I mean, I'm still continuing the Marie Kondo process as always. Did I monetize, guys? Let's find out. Um computer so slow sometimes but yes uh oh yes we're monetized very good i think rk monetized for me so uh he saved me on that one um professor's here good day professor good morning page oh <laughs> page the puppet cannot do push-ups <laughs> that's hilarious oh can you imagine a puppet trying to do push-ups that would be ridiculous um Kitty's here. Good morning, Kitty. All right. That, shout out to everyone who did push-ups while I was uh, try, waiting for my computer to unfreeze. Cher says, I'm painting a birthday present for my dad's friend who's turning 83. Oh, that's exciting. I bet he's going to love that. Good morning, Amy. Glad you're here. Uh, Paige says, Mama just bought a drawing tablet yesterday. Now she's trying to learn how to use it. Oh, that's exciting. I love my drawing tablet. Although I've considered whether I should get like a fancier one in the future. I've had the same drawing tablet for the past 10 years. And it's like, um, oh, I can show you my desk is a mess again, but it's, uh, it's, it's this, this is my drawing tablet. So you, you use the stylus and you draw on here. I've considered whether I should get one where you have a screen on it and you draw directly on the screen. But a lot of the apps I know like Procreate are iPad exclusive. So I don't know if I don't really want to get a whole iPad. Those are expensive. So if anyone has recommendations, let me know. Queen says, good morning. I refuse to put on a push up bra. That's the best I will do. <laughs> Allie says, hi everyone. It's lovely to see you all here. Lovely to see you here, Allie. Um, Okay, Cher, everyone's being funny about the push-up bra. Cher says, I wear a push-up bra for 10 minutes. I've never worn a push-up bra in my life. How do they feel? Um, yeah, I guess because I've, I've had too big of boobs by the time I started wearing a bra. And before that, I just wore no bra because I was like, I'm a child. I don't need to wear a bra. But as it turns out, health-wise, I did. 
Um, hey, Stephanie's here. What's up? What's up? Um, okay, let's, uh, oh, Kitty reminding everyone to like the stream. That's right. Everyone uh, give the stream a like. It feels weird to ask for that, but it helps with the algorithm and we definitely want to keep growing this show. Good morning, Kat. Glad you're here. Caroline wears a bra like 10% of the time now. Yeah, I alternate between like, I have to wear a bra because my boob weight is too intense and I'm going to die. And I just wore a sports bra to the gym and now my shoulders are hurting so much from having anything on it. So now I will not wear a bra. It's just basically which pain do I want to take more in that moment is the just where I go back and forth between. Um, Brianna's here. Good morning, Brianna. Monique just watched Loki's season finale. I haven't watched Loki at all. I've heard good things about it, though. Um, Cher says, I wear a vest instead of a bra. A vest? What do you mean by a vest? Like a like a vest that you would, I don't know, like a, like a Girl Scout vest? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, my goodness. Um, the book internet. Yes, the book internet is a real place, and it's a big mess. What's the tea with American dirt? Uh, we can talk about it. That's old news, isn't it's it? Old or did news, something new happen? No, it's just we're going over Oprah's book club, and that's her. Most oh, Oprah book recommended club. American Dirt. Oh, yeah, that's why it blew up so big. It's a, the most recent controversy of American of Oprah's book club was American Dirt. We'll focus Got on it. James Frey mostly, but yeah, American Dirt was. What was going on with push up bras? Oh, um, you told everyone to do push ups, and then I think it was Queen who was like. Well, the best I can do is a push-up bra. And then mm. Cher is like, I haven't worn a push-up bra in a while. And then everyone started talking about wearing push-up bras. And I've never worn a push-up bra. So I don't know if they're fun or not. But I don't know. Maybe I'll try one sometime. Do I make them in my size? Let me look it up. Let me look it up right now, guys. Push-up bra size 34H. I'm not, I'm not. Has Oprah made a push-up bra? I don't know. Is Oprah gonna, Oprah's a push-up bra? I would buy that. Uh, oh, here's, is this on eBay? Only comes in size O. Or O cups. Okay, here. It looks like there's one from Curvy Coacher. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll buy that at some point. Um, let's see. The Jennifer Weiner controversy... I actually didn't know about that one either. So there's a few nah, controversies. Nah, wiener. <laughs> uh, wiener. Uh, I don't see it on the Wikipedia page. The Wikipedia page looks like it hasn't been updated in a while. Though. Dude, Willie Nelson looks great for 88. Yeah. Dude, you know who looks great um, for 90 is William Shatner. He looks amazing for 90, but I feel bad. It's all that light speed traveling. Being happy for William Shatner because he was so rude to Amanda on Twitter. And once someone insults one of our viewers on Twitter, it makes me like them a little less, despite like how much of a William Shatner fan I've been. Like them long. less. I love I love how it wasn't dislike them. It's like them less. <laughs> well, on the show, we don't do hate. We don't do hate. We do. Uh, we do. Are we a fan or did you insult our friend on Twitter? <laughs> those are the two genders. Those are the two genders. <laughs> So I'm gonna look up um, Oprah Jennifer Weiner. Weiner. She had a temper uh, tantrum about not being chosen for the book club, and it created a conversation oh, about weaponized white feminism. Oh, was that Weiner? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's such a like when someone says it like that. That's such a stretch, and I'm like, whoa. But I'm sure we're gonna read the article and understand the trajectory of events that led to that. But it's like she wasn't picked for Oprah's book club, and then we had a discussion about weaponized white feminism, and I'm like, wait, what? How did that relate? But we're gonna find out because we're gonna look at it, and I bet that she was probably being an asshole. Would be my guess. I don't um, know. I mean. Imagine writing your book and or writing a book and actually thinking it's good enough for people to waste their time reading it. You just gotta be happy when one person wastes their time reading your book. So the James Frey situation, I didn't realize how old it was. Like I remember learning about it in my memoir class in grad school like two or three years ago, but apparently he was uh, debunked mm -hmm. way back in two thousand six. I didn't know that. Oh, so it's actually later than I thought I thought it was like fresh on the heels of Y two K. Oh, I think, well, his book came out in 2003, so, yeah, but then it was debunked, I think, in 2006. 
Got it. So we've got so, Jennifer Weiner, and we've got. Um, he had success with Bush's first term and failure in Bush's second term. Got it. All right. Oh. Let's see. Thank you, Professor, for reminding everyone to like the stream. Good morning, Amanda. Or dislike it. Just about the engagement. All right. Looks like everyone saw the ad, so we're definitely monetized. Um, really? Yeah. Okay, dude. The stuff that happens in the writing community is always insane. Nothing uh, happens in the writing. Community. I'll have to check out Illuminati's awesome Shatner videos. Um, yeah, it's a shame that William Shatner is an asshole, especially on Twitter. Ever since, I mean, I know he's also been kind of a dick in real life, but I always took that as just kind of like, oh, that's just an actor being an entitled actor. But now on Twitter, he's like doing it to people in person. Whoa, Jennifer Weiner and Jody Picoult got into a beef with Jonathan Franzen. Okay, dude, Molly, I will not accept this. Captain Kirk is not gross. Um, Maybe Captain Kirk in in J.J. Abrams' stupid ass reboot is gross, but that's because J.J. Abrams is gross. Hmm. No, Captain Kirk, William Shatner's Captain Kirk is amazing. He's not gross. He is he is a, a career man dedicated to Starfleet, very into uh, studying and diplomacy while still trying to balance that with his um, more impulsive and aggressive side. And I can relate to that. I relate to Captain Kirk a lot. So no one no. No one say that Captain Kirk is gross. You say that William Shatner's gross all you want. Captain Kirk is not gross. Savvy, you gotta cut her some slack. Italy just won the world. Just just won UEFA. She's still drunk. <laughs> I didn't know Dude, James Free died. There's so much. There's so much author drama here. There's no such thing uh, as author drama. They're not playwrights. No, James Reed didn't die. Oh, wait. Um, Stephanie says, did anyone see the video of a white woman, ha quote, having a breakdown of Victoria's Secret? It was the new, like, that was the new, like, uh, Karen video, right? Are they going to name her something now? Like, there was, like, Barbecue Becky and Central Park Karen. What are they going to name this lady? Victoria's Secret Vicky or something? Because <laughs> she was, yeah, there was this, yeah. Um... That was wild. This is off topic, but yeah, Sorry, there was. To uh, I saw the video. I think someone, someone had posted it on Twitter. It was basically there was, there was a they were at a Victoria's Secret, and this apparently this this white lady was getting trying to get in a fight with this black lady, and the black lady took out her phone and started recording it. And you can see at the beginning of the recording, the white lady who I'll just call Karen because that's what everyone's calling her. You can see Karen coming at her. And then um, after the, she noticed she was filming, she stopped fighting and immediately like switched roles and like fell on the floor and started fake crying. It was wild. It was Wait, how weirdest... recent is this? It's like yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fucking weird, dude. Like when you can see people uh, just switch their emotions all of a sudden like that, you're like, oh, as we're, we need to, okay, when we get a soundboard, we can, we need to get the clip of Shane Dawson going, you are fake crying, and then we can put that up, because I feel like there are so many situations where that's going to apply to. Um, wait. <laughs> a woman being labeled as Victoria's Secret Karen broke down in tears and pretended to pass out as she was being recorded by another woman who claims the Karen tried to hit her. Um, yeah, this woman's definitely going to get it her come like, up at, at like online point, right now like, at this point how do you if you're being you don't come back from that if you're the being world has seen your face <laughs> why would you continue to fake cry in that situation because like you know that people you know you're gonna go viral as the next big internet karen at that point like is she just being an idiot i don't know what's going on there well you never know you're gonna go viral i mean there are hilarious videos that don't go viral every day um Liz says, why didn't the employees call mall security? Um, yeah, that was a good question. Paul Blart Mall Cop should have come and said he could have he could have saved the day. Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what they did call security and security just took forever. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, mall security. Mall security. <laughs> Um, an article from Heavy implied she pretended to be sick online. Wait, is this the same woman? Is this Victoria's Secret Karen? 
Victoria's Secret Karen sounds like she's got a lot going on. Or was it someone else? Because, like, th that's either a really complex villain or two stories just collided. Dude, there's some wild shit going on. And I think, uh, okay, so let's let's go into Oprah's book club. We can briefly talk about the first controversy, which is this guy, Jonathan Franzen. I'll just read the Wikipedia summary of this. I find it interesting, but it sounds like a lot of the rest of these have a lot more to unpack, especially now I got to look up. You know, Savvy, in some circles, reading the Wikipedia of a book is now considered a review. Is it? Yeah, um, Amy, you better laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Wiener, Jody Pickle. And what was her name? Sarah, was it Sarah? Sarah Just Jackson? type in Oprah likes weird author names. Oh, Jody Picoult, Sarah Dessen, and Jennifer Weiner band together to dunk on a college student. Wow, that's rude as fuck. Yeah, Amy, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Made Amy cackle. It's a good day. Oof. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to give credit to Wikipedia for this. But basically, the first controversy that happened, I believe, um, was the Jonathan Franzen thing. So it said Jonathan Franzen felt conflicted about his book Corrections being chosen as a book club selection. So Jonathan Franzen's book Corrections um, it's a novel from 2001. It revolves it revolves around the troubles of an elderly Midwestern couple and their three adult children tracing their lives from mid 20th century to one last Christmas together. All right. Sounds like a book. Um, after the announcement was made, he expressed distaste with being in the company of other Oprah's book club authors. Oh, dude. So this guy's like, uh, like arrogant as fuck. He's like, I'm better than the other authors in Oprah's book club, which is ridiculous because most of Oprah's book club authors are like, Many of them are classical literature authors, so okay. I, I, don't, I could see myself not wanting to be associated with other authors, not out of a place of elitism. But out of a place of like, what? I smoke too much and don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you and I met through author Twitter, so if we're gonna, you, you associated with me and now I won't go away because you started hanging out with me on author Twitter not knowing how needy of a friend I was. Dude, I had a nightmare once that you just kept calling. Like, I swear to God, I forgot what it was. I literally had a nightmare that, like, I just kept getting calls from you and I woke up so stressed. I'm so sorry. I know I did. That's the thing. I, why am I apologizing? I didn't do that in real life. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you know it's partially just, like, I have wild dreams. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, I have, uh, I'll, that's like, I'll have a dream where I'll be like, Tyler, I had a dream you cheated on me with a coworker, and then you called me fat and told your mom that you hated me. And he'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah, you don't need to apologize. It didn't happen. Like, <laughs> but that's, that's basically, I feel really bad that you had that dream. Not that I actually did that. Though. I mean, dude, dude, I don't want to go into detail about it, but remember the, the right wing nationals nightmare I had? Oh, I do. That, was that one was fucked up. <laughs> Funny as shit. <laughs> Yes, y'all are missing out on some inside jokes that you will never be a part of. Well, I I I feel really bad. I think that I'm like giving you subconscious stress because I like talk to you too much. That last one wasn't you. <laughs> I should talk to you less. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. All right, all right. So what what happened was. So he expressed his taste. So he said in an interview that Oprah had picked some good books, but she's picked enough schmaltzy one-dimensional ones that I cringe myself, even though I think she's really smart and she's fighting the good fight. He and has to carefully compliment her so he doesn't ruin all of the sales she just gave him while yeah. at the same time insulting her taste. He's like, Oprah's really smart, but some of the books she picks are really dumb, and my book is better than those dumb books. So... <laughs> He, and then Franzen added that his novel was a hard book for that audience. He's like, uh, Oprah's fans are kind of dumb, and my book is really smart. So I don't know if Oprah's dumbass fans will be able to understand my smart book. I love Oprah. Give me all this money, but fuck everyone associated. Dude, this guy sounds like a huge asshole. I think he might just, like, honestly, this is just so stupid on his part. He's just trolling. This was, this was the pre-troll. You think he's trolling? Yeah. No, I, I think he's actually this stupid. I just want to live in a world where he's not. I just want to live this in a world where this is like, 40 chess. This, this is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. <laughs> 
Following the criticism, Franzen was uninvited from the televised book club dinner, and he apologized. When he was not invited back, he suggested that perhaps he and Oprah could still have dinner, but not on TV. But Oprah was all booked up, and her spokesperson said she was moving on. So he's like, I'm sorry, Oprah, can we get dinner together? And Oprah's assistant was like, Oprah's busy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, imagine thinking you're entitled to Oprah's time. <laughs> I know, right? Like, you come out here and you're like, um, Oprah did this amazing thing for my sales, but I'm actually not happy about it. And I, and then Oprah uninvites him from, like, the official book club dinner. And he's like, well, Oprah, can we still get dinner together? And, like, she doesn't even talk to him. Like, her assistant talks to him. And it's like, Oprah doesn't have time for you. Go away. <laughs> Dude, that is, a, that is a great move on Oprah's part. Queen, I never said it's easier for me to accept. I said I want to live in a world where that's the <laughs> accept what we accept. <laughs> like, 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 that's all. I just think one way is way more fun because stupidity is not fun. So, um, like, have you ever tried arguing with a sports fan? There's no point to that. It's that, That's as much fun as stupidity gets. Even that's just depressing. Like, it's why well, we drink. Like, I, I, I've done that before in the past when you argue over sports because there's no point to it. There's it's zero like, point to it. And you like, have zero impact argue, on the game. <laughs> I can argue that the sports team I like is better than the sports team you like. And then you can bring up examples of the time the team you like did better things. And I can bring up examples of the time the team I like did better things. And it's like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> At the end of the day, sports teams have no impact on society. There's just the for matters. fun. Is that we both dislike Notre Dame? Fist bump. Boom! Fuck Notre Dame. Fuck Notre anyone Dame. Anyone in the uh, yeah, if anyone in the chat went to Notre Dame, I apologize, but uh, I, I still cry when I watch Rudy, but it's overrated. They're overrated tears. Do you really cry, or are you quoting Dave Hollis there? Oh shit! Did Dave Hollis? Does Dave Hollis cry when he watches Rudy? Yeah. He mentioned yeah. that. That was a part of I course, cut of out of I cry when I watch Rudy. I'm not a that monster. That was a part I cut out of my review video of the first Deep Dave because I felt that it was too rude of me. But I was reading, I was like, when he was talking about like his whole section where he's like, before I went to therapy, I thought therapy was just for, for crazy weak people and women. But that's because I had thought that I had to be this big manly man my whole life. But I don't have to just be a man. I cry when I watch Rudy. Like he's going on about all this stuff. And in there originally I was like, um, crying when you watch Rudy is not cool, Dave. Fuck Notre Dame. And I went on this whole rant about how I hate Notre Dame. And then I was like, this is just mean. I'm gonna cut this out. This has nothing to do with book reviewing. But I did focus on the other parts where he was like uh, being uh, kind of a weirdo about therapy. Dude, I hate Notre Dame too, but I still cry when I watch Rudy. It's a beautiful story. I, it's been a long time since I've seen Rudy. I saw Rudy last as like a child. So. But the Red Pill guys cry during Rudy. They I understand me. I do. I wonder if they cry during Rudy. Yeah, but not in front of their wives because according to them, their wives would find them sexually repulsive if they cry during Rudy. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, I don't fucking know. Maybe. Let's just go back to this. Let's Franzen. go back to Oprah. Oh. <laughs> Let's go back to Oprah. So what happened? <laughs> this conversation next? is depressing me. Uh, so other writers were also critical of Jonathan Franzen. Writing in the New York Times, author Verlin Klinkenborg suggested that lurking Wait, behind... Klinkenborg? Yeah. I don't Dude, know if I, I pronounced that right, but that seems to be the name. Um... Lurking behind Mr. Franzen's rejection of Miss Winfrey is an elemental distrust of readers, except the ones he designates, which is accurate. And that's why it's so cringy. Andre Dubas III, the, all the writers that are criticizing him have cool names. We had Verlin Ver Klinkenborg, and now we have Andre Dubas III. Dude. Andre Dubas III wrote that it is so illegal. Who are the gatekeepers in this, in this writing critic community that only <laughs> accept people based on these incredible names? Okay, wait, just because oh, you brought up Heidi Powell, Julia. Should we do Heidi Powell next week? I don't fucking care. She exists. I think we should we'll do her. because people keep talking to me about her, and she's a workout influencer and we're already working out more. So I want to uh, try her workout programs and review them and see if they're good. Um, but a lot of her, she drinks a lot of, uh, she drinks a lot. And <laughs> she, drinks a, she drinks a lot of shitty, like beach body powder and stuff. So, 
<laughs> we'll see. And then we could uh, talk about how she exposes her kids constantly on Instagram, which is not cool. Um, uh, let's see. So, yes, anytime that someone recommends a uh, bra stop, I have to say yes. Yeah. Someone emailed me the other day. Someone emailed me and was like, Hey, Savvy, I love your videos, but I can't help but notice that you have a large chest and small waist. I hope that wasn't rude to say, but I have the same problem and I can't find any bras that fit. Do you have recommendations? And I was like, yeah, of course, go on Bra Stop. And then she emailed me back and was like, I shopped at Bra Stop and now I'm so happy. I'm, I, bra Stop needs to sponsor me already. Bra Stop. I'm manifesting a Bra Stop sponsorship. Manifesting the sponsorship of Bra Stop. Uh, wait queen put, there's a fake account of you which one which i one put them it? in a timeout i assume oh it's i didn't even see it i'm sorry who 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 was it there we'll we'll find out if i put the right one in, in timeout i assume was I it did. another one that's also called queen with two emojis well, next to it yeah that's why it was a pure guess on my part this to go around just because on Streamyard i can only see their their Oh, Usernames. that's weird. Okay, yeah. Um, sorry about that. I didn't know that was there. My bad. Uh, Meanwhile, Adorkables is still talking about big titty problems. Big titty, dude. Big titty. I could talk about big titty problems all day. You guys know that. I've talked about them in many, many videos. Um. So you're the real queen. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. Sorry. Um. Hopefully the RK blocked the right one. I didn't see the fake one. I'm sorry. It's gonna be um, get really awkward in here if I didn't. Yeah, if, if the troll is in here and just starts saying <laughs> troll shit, like that's gonna be weird. <laughs> did I just lose Among Us? Did you lose? Did you did you choose the imposter correctly? <laughs> um, oh my god. So a man. I don't know Amy, who the big one is right now. Amy, I'm sorry, let me throw this away. I, I put them the fake one. I think we blocked the fake one. I thought we I put did. them in a five minute timeout because I didn't want to block them because I was terrified of blocking Queen. Um. So Amy says I highly recommend an online fitting with Livy Ray lingerie. They're based out of Georgia and deal with all sizes. Uh. Okay. I I will I will start shopping there like today. I'm always shopping for new bras. Um. Eva says a sister goes in next month for redu. Yes. 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 Um. Next month is. Next month is my first consultation with a plastic surgeon. Today I'm going to call my insurance and find out what other things I need to get ready for that. Um, okay. So anyway, back to Jonathan Franzen. and um, yeah, no queen. I see. I know that you're the real one now, but I can't block. Like, I'm trying to find it in here. What's our your morning guru? Cause I can't find them in the here anymore. What's the name of the fake one? Is it the same name as you? Yeah, but but I can't find them in here anymore because I put them in timeout, so their comment disappeared. I can't. Click okay, on well, anymore. we think we got the fake one. We think we got the fake one. So if the fake one comes back up, we'll block them again. Let me just let me just enjoy this sigh. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. All right. So okay. okay. So Andre, let's go back to uh, Verlin Klinkenborg and Andre Dubis the Third. We've got some cool ass author names. Um. So Andre Dubas III wrote that it is so elitist it offends me deeply the assumption that high art is not for the masses, that they won't understand that they don't deserve it. I find it reprehensible. Is that a judgment on the audience or on the books whose company he would be, or the books in whose company he would be? Um, yet Oprah, in 2010, Oprah chose another one of his books called Freedom. What's Freedom about? Freedom is a 2010 novel by Jonathan Franzen. It was published by blah 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 it received there, general acclaim. Them. Okay, this just goes to show right here that men can act completely foolish and elitist about their books and still get big publication deals and big uh, acclaim and get selected in Oprah's book club and shit. It's awesome. You guys notice that when women do this shit, when women get... Uh, it, not that they should, not that anyone should do this. I don't think men, women, anyone should act super uh, elitist about their books or do what he's doing because it's insulting and nasty. But when when men act this way, people are like, oh, that's just, that's just him as the artist. 
being like, it's very rude and elitist of him, but he's such a good author. We'll give him another book deal. We'll select his book because people will like it. I feel like when women do this, people get like, she is canceled. Uh, we're done with her. I don't, I don't know. know. That's just what I've noticed. I, I don't um, know if that's accurate or not. It might be. Um, I need to hear, hear some examples. I'm just thinking out loud about this topic right here. It's almost like the mystique is easier to sell than the book. Um, so I do think that that's something where if you get the mystique right, both genders or all genders can can, can um mm -hmm. can profit off of it because there certainly are feminine mystiques that mm -hmm. can make a book more intriguing and draw in an audience. I think what Amy's saying here is true. Men can write about what they want in their books despite own voices or not, and no one says boo to them, but women will get piled on for it. Yeah, I, I think so too. And that's the thing. I've noticed well, this in yeah, every field. Yeah, that sounds field. like American Dirt. I think, too. yeah, we'll talk about American Dirt in a minute. I think that women, and then, again, this is not me defending women doing these shitty things. It's, it's me saying that men are able to get away with them, though, which is stupid. Um, but yeah, um, now I forgot where I was going with that. Um, oh, yeah, I, I didn't mean to say specific. I meant to say example. I didn't mean to say specific, like it was the only one. Just, yeah, but what Amy's saying, this is a really good point. Amer around the same time American Dirt was published. So we'll get into American Dirt in a second because it was also an Oprah's Book Club controversy. But the basic controversy with American Dirt was it was an immigration story about a woman coming from Mexico to the United States. And it was written by a white woman. And I think I personally don't think there's anything wrong with someone writing about um, a culture or an identity that's not their own as long as they did enough research and did a good job with it. The problem was that she got a lot of things wrong. She uh, also, her like publisher and promotions team did a lot of insensitive imagery around immigration, which we'll talk about there. So there was a lot of issues with that. However, what Amy's bringing up here is that at the same time, there was a man who did very similar things and no one cared. It's like now what I was but I, I don't was, but we're not even like for example we don't even know the title of his book we know American Dirt we know the author and I know true. an Irish man did it but I don't know his name or yeah the so title maybe it's because his book wasn't as popular yeah and I, it certainly wasn't picked up by Oprah I mean American Dirt won the Goodreads Choice Award for its category which is a popularity contest vote so it still did very well with sales uh, Stephanie as long as men are going to dominate the genre of producing lesbian porn I think women are allowed to dominate the genre of writing male male romance that's my whole thing on that um what was I gonna say then oh yeah I think there's this weird <laughs> there's this weird expectation that women are supposed to be progressing everything all the time so like if you're a, people will get so excited, oh, this is this powerful woman in business. This is this powerful woman in whatever. And then you make a wrong step. And now it's like this woman is problematic, which if you make the wrong step, then like you should be, you should be criticized for it. But I'm just saying men should also be criticized for it too. Uh, book Twitter slayed you for bringing, book Twitter slays everyone for everything. Book Twitter is, uh, book Twitter is like high school 2.0 because most of book Twitter is 16. Yeah, Twitter just sucks. I mean, I don't follow anyone on, on book Twitter at the moment. And the few times I signed into Twitter, I see like Conor McGregor fans being assholes. Or Ben Shapiro acting like Ben Shapiro. I, I think it's impossible to go on Twitter and leave in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, Twitter, Twitter is just a, a nasty place. I still go there, which I probably shouldn't, but I try to go there less. Um, yeah. Though I will say, I like Ben Shapiro's uh, Sunday special with Russell Brand. I listened to that. I like that. Oh, I haven't seen it. I should make another drunk Ben Shapiro video. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I personally don't. That's the thing. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with people writing outside their own identity as long as they do it well. Like... That's the thing is I'm going to criticize the book regardless of what the author is. I've criticized, like, for example, you guys know the biggest thing I like to criticize in books is, is bisexual erasure. I will read books that are by bisexual authors that have bisexual erasure in them and still criticize that just the same as I would if it was a straight author. What the fuck? Um, I blocked Queen, the trolls in the chat. I don't fucking know. I hate everything. Wait, I'm, the I'm, trolls I, in the chat? What? 
Queen just DM'd me that I blocked that I blocked her and not the troll. And this is that's why I said I didn't want to block anyone. But you know oh, what? I blame no. you, Queen. I blame you. You told me to block someone. Fuck everyone. I hate y'all. Not really. I love y'all. But I'm over. Okay, well, block. you only put the troll in, you only put real queen in a five minute timeout. So when no, she's. No, I back, blocked because I they kept saying block, block. I fell for. Oh, but pressure. it was a troll saying block. Oh my God. Okay, that. How do we unblock? Oh, wait, no, I didn't block. Okay, sweet. I did not block. We're good. We're good. Okay, so in five minutes, she should be able to come back and then we can block the troll. Yeah, okay. Guys, I'm sorry. Maybe we need to get some... You know what? We should get mods. Some people have suggested getting mods, and I've never had mods because on a fundamental level, I've always been like, I don't need mods. My chat's the Wild West. People say whatever the fuck they want, and this because this is an open forum. However, when there's trolls and weird shit like this, like I feel like we need mods. Anyone who's interested in being a mod for our chat, please let well, us you know in the chat. If you are the troll, uh, you, if you are the imposter, then you do not get to be a mod. But anyone who's interested in being a mod, let us know and you can, uh, we'll give you, I don't know how to set up mod privileges, but I'll figure it out. I'll just do it right now. I'm really glad Amanda said she'd be a mod because Amanda was the one I was hoping would be a mod. She's so good at everything in this chat. Um, uh, um, where's Amanda in here? I'll, I'm just going to do right, no, we, so we, we, we need them because specifically like now it's super chat. If there's hate speech or something in, in, in the, um, in the chat, uh, and your video gets blocked, and then YouTube keeps all the revenue, and you don't get any of it, including oh. the super chats. And Oof. so mods can quickly put a stop to that. Okay. Yeah. And okay. So we'll have Amanda. Amanda, a Amanda will definitely be a mod. Um, Kitty will be a mod. Kitty will be a mod. Mods can share links too. Just Dave is a mod because she knows that. Who else wants to be a mod? Oh, Julia gave us a super chat. Thank you, Julia. I appreciate that. We don't need your money, but we appreciate it. All right, it. this Thank is you. the first time. I should probably get mods for my main channel at some point. I feel like I'm the only channel. Like, I feel like people usually get mods around the time they get to like 500 or 1,000 subscribers. And I'm like, I've reached 25,000. I'm like, who needs mods? But I should make mods for my own channel at some point. Wait. Um, Wait, never mind. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're Allie, good. I used to, my channel used to, I used to try to follow all the booktube conventions and things like that. I don't, I still do a lot of book, my channel does a lot of book reviews mainly, but I don't try to, to, to appease like booktube conventions because I realized that so much of it was like traditionally published YA fantasy. And that's not what I read at all. I read almost exclusively like weird indie books or business books. I read almost exclusively nonfiction and business books, which isn't talked about much there. Um, so I started the books and business niche on my channel instead, which I like. Um, oh, cool. I, I'm not, I can't, on StreamYard, you can't see the wrenches and things like that. So I'm glad that, I'm glad that we have, um, Wait, did anyone else say they wanted to be a mod while I was looking down, reading the messages oh, that I got? Molly said she'll be a mod. Okay. Where'd you go, Molly? There you are. All right, thanks for being mods, guys. I really appreciate awesome. it. We have an Italian mod now. <laughs> I think it's really important to, to emphasize right, the Italian so we got, part. We got mods. We've got mods, y'all. I'll have to make some mods for my main channel at some point, too. Uh, I don't know how to do it. I'll figure it out. Literally go over the chat mm -hmm. in, on your phone and just hold down their name. And then this thing comes up, and then you can add them as a mod. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. It's that fucking easy. Thank Wait, you in a month you won't be I'll... Italian? Um, I'm pretty in sure a month you won't stay be a mod. I'm pretty sure you stay Italian. Unless, are you, you mean because you're moving out of Italy? I don't know. All I know is just you, you got to let us know so I can remove your mod status. <laughs> We don't need another American mod. We don't need another American mod. <laughs> or Canadian mod. Any we could have a Canadian mod. If anyone Canadian wants to be a mod, let us know. Um, 
Oh, look at Eva being so nice. If Eva says, if I were Oprah, this is July's book of the month, 90s Kids by our very own Safi. Oh, thank you. Shout Wait, out. You're not Italian? I feel so lied to. I think Molly just lives in Italy right now and is moving to Nebraska. Mod privilege is revoked. <laughs> no, no. There we go. All right, y'all. We got mods Let me now. think about giving you the mod privileges back now. Did you yeah, actually gotta... revoke them? Yes. Oh my god, I thought you were kidding. I speak the truth, Savvy. No, you don't. Most I don't time, lie. Most of the time you're making shit up. <laughs> uh, I feel anyway, like yes. Uh Oprah's book club selection, Eva's book club selection this month is 90s kids written by Savvy. Guys, there she's a mod again, Savvy. Okay, are you happy? <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna take I'm this. I'm, I'm done this, blocking people. I'm done I'm, modding people. I'm taking I'm, this moment for self-promotion. Speaking over Savvy as she self-promotes. I'm taking this moment for self-promotion. Because since uh, since Eva self-promoted me, I'm going to self-promote myself. Well, she didn't self-promote me. She just regular promoted me. So, guys, if you want to read mouth. 90s Kids, which is Eva's Oprah's book club selection. If Op if Eva was Oprah, this would be this would be the book club selection. Then, oh wow, is it there, showing sorry. up or is my computer really frozen? Oh, there it is. Oh no, I I, I shared SMT's thank you for being on Council of Geeks, uh, for, for interviewing with Council of Geeks because they love dude. Council of Geeks is awesome, their videos are so good. Um, so anyway, guys, right here, 90s Kids on this website on my merch site, you can get signed copies. Um, and I'll give you a little note with them. So I gotta put a dorkable some time out. We another fucking Canadian. <laughs> Sorry, bye, savvy shit, y'all. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> so anyone, yeah. So if if you want, if you want what should have been Oprah's book club selection, then you can get signed copies of '90s Kids right there on my website. Just a quick, quick ad read from myself. Oh, Shelby says, I just bought Smile Chewy for my baby and 90s kids is next for me. Oh, thank you. I hope that everyone enjoys them. I hope everyone enjoys them. Um, so, okay. So the whole thing with Jonathan Friends, and that was Oprah's first big book club controversy from 2001. Then 2005 was the controversy with James Frey. So in 2005, she, she chose his book, A Million Little Pieces, for um, the... Uh, for the 2005 book club choice. Um, so A Million Little Pieces is, uh, I'm just reading the description, is a book by James Frey, originally sold as a memoir and later marketed as a semi-fictional novel following accusations of literary forgery. It tells the story of a 23-year-old alcoholic and abuser of other drugs and how he copes with rehabilitation. So basically the controversy around the book A Million Little Pieces was that um, James Frey wrote this book, right, and sold it as a memoir. And now in the publishing world, if you sell something as nonfiction and it's like, just like, whoa, like the standards are a little different for fiction and nonfiction, right? So he's tried to, he wrote this book about his, his journey recovering from drug addiction and alcohol abuse and things like that. And there were a lot of like wild borderline unbelievable stories in it. But he was like, this is my memoir. This is my life. All of this really happened. So publishers were like, that really happened. That's amazing. We need to sell this as a book. Now, if this had been fiction, there would be a little bit different of standards. Like, oh, did you create a good suspension of disbelief? Is the writing engaging enough? But the fact that it was sold as nonfiction, people just wanted to read it to find out this stuff that really happened, right? However, as it turns out, not all of the stuff in his book did really happen. He sold it as this is all 100% true. And it started also beyond just um, it being considered literary forgery. Beyond that, it started this entire big literary discussion about what memoir is and how much of memoir has to be true. Because in the world of memoir, while it is nonfiction, there's also an expectation that it's biased, right? Because you're writing a memoir from your point of view. You're writing a memoir 
um, about your life. So you might portray someone in your family as different than they would portray themselves. You might not recall a conversation word for word. So you might make the dialogue a little more dramatic because you're writing it from your memory and not from there's no journalistic fact. You're not recording these things. So memoirs are never intended to have journalistic integrity. However, they are expected to be true overall. However, there's always been a gray area of how, how much of a memoir is supposed to be factual versus how much is supposed to be just in the spirit of the truth. And I don't think there's a hard answer to that because the, the art of memoir would die if it had to be 100% factual because as humans, our memories ha are faulty. We don't have perfect memories of every situation that happens. So we're automatically going to filter our memories through our own emotional lenses and might not tell a story completely accurately. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to tell that as a memoir. But where's the line between that and a story that you've made up entire scenes or made up entire events that didn't happen? Where, where's the line? I don't think there is a hard line. So that's it really sparked that interesting type of discussion. Um, I'm over fan fiction about yourself, fictional memoir, not creative nonfiction example, what I did during summer vacation. So Eva says I'm writing a fictional memoir, but it's labeled that from the start. It's an actual area of literature. So someone saying creative nonfiction is nonfiction is way off. And that's the thing. Creative nonfiction is different from like, if you have like narrative journalism, right? So like I've written narrative journalism where it's supposed to be like, a, it's supposed to tell like a story and like a narrative, but it also has to be journalism. You can only, you only include quotes from people that you interview directly. You interview and you take direct quotes from them and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of the thing. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm trying not to interrupt you anymore after I had my, my meltdown about Molly not being Italian. You can interrupt me all you want. This is a conversation. But I anyway, just, I hate being lied to. I really thought she was Italian. She didn't lie to you. She just told you she lived in Italy and you ran with it. Yeah, and James Ray didn't lie to us. He just told us he was really into drugs. He, and he was. <laughs> that wasn't wrong. Queen says, yeah, Queen, write a fanfic about us. What are we going to do on it? Are we going to do cool stuff? Are we going to have superpowers? Don't answer that if it's not a good answer. <laughs> don't ship us. That's what I'm trying to say. I, can, I don't mind being shipped with anyone, but that's, again, that's just, that's me. Okay, fine. You can ship us. And, and you, you can, can ship answer. ship me with... Uh, Carl's Llama. No, I was going to say... <laughs> Car Car gonna Carl's say, butt, you baby. You can ship me with any, uh, any adult human... And I will I will do a dramatic reading of the fanfic. If it is not an adult human, then I will not touch it with a ten foot pole. It's um, it sh ships doesn't have to be romantic ship. Yeah, and all my friends are dead. We have a friendship, Doug. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. This is when I I posted a thing on my Instagram story that was like, if you wrote a fanfic about me, who would you ship me with? And the most common answer was. Rachel Hollis. Oh, someone was going to ship me with capitalism, right? Someone was going to write like the savvy, savvy and capitalism, childhood Erotica. friends to enemies to lovers. <laughs> I, I think a savvy nobody ship anybody. Caroline, no, 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 nobody ship anybody with Paige the puppet. That is unacceptable. <laughs> um. So okay. So let's talk about the controversy that happened um, with James Frey in 2006. Um, so it was supposed to be a life of his uh, true account. Uh, it said it became, uh, this, I'm reading from Wikipedia again, just so people know. It became the book club's greatest selling book up to that point, And many readers spoke of how the account helped free them from drugs as well. But the additional attention focused on Frey's memoir soon led to critics questioning the validity of his supposedly true account, especially regarding his treatment while in a rehabilitation facility and his stories of time spent in jail. Initially, Frey convinced Larry King that the embellishments in his book were the sort that could be found in any literary memoir. Winfrey encouraged debate about how creative nonfiction should be classified and cited the inspirational impact Frey's work had on so many of her viewers. But as more accusations against the book surfaced, Winfrey invited Frey on the show to find out directly from him whether he had lied to her and her viewers. So I'm going to pull up that video and we can take a look at the video of what happened there. Man, first Dr. Phil, then Dr. Oz, now James Frey. Oprah, man. 
I'm gonna put this on one and a half speed, and if we get copyright claimed, I'm gonna. I'm We're gonna, gonna get copyright claimed. Well, we you just gotta for, accept it. We didn't for any of the Doctor Phil. The only thing we've ever gotten copyright claimed for was Degrassi. Oh, Degrassi. So this is on one and a half speed. Let me share the screen. All right, so we're taking a look over here at um, Oprah confronting James Frey on her show. TV Guide magazine. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I don't know what is true, and I don't know what isn't. So first of all, I wanted to start with Smoking Gun Report. Um, I don't, the man who conned Oprah, and I want to know where they write. I, I... Dude, this guy looks so nervous, and I also love how the thing was called The Man Who Conned Oprah. Most of what they wrote was pretty accurate, absolutely. I think this made the list because it was such an unforgettable moment of television. This was like a train wreck you couldn't take your eyes away from. You just couldn't stop watching it. In this corner, there's Oprah. In this corner, we've got James Fry to defend himself. I don't know why he's there, but he's there trying to defend himself. Good luck, James Fry. <laughs> James he looks very uncomfortable to be here. He he's just sitting there like, mm. I mean, he's there because he, as long as he gets attention, he wins in his mind, maybe. I don't know. Like, it, 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 it was a, it was a, a fire he wasn't going to put out no matter what, so... I don't fucking know. Amanda says horror made me think of a wild, savvy fan fiction where she meets someone who looks exactly like her goals and does some weird Frankenstein stuff to become them. Yeah, I like <laughs> to give myself the huge muscles and huge uh, body type goals I want. Okay, wait, I love Bad Astra's fanfic idea. RK and Savvy as child puppets fighting Canada meet Paige and become besties when she helps them reach a diplomatic solution. Yes! Yes! Guys, make us an AO3 tag. I'll read the shit out of that. Let's begin. I did that show, and I was pretty defensive. I was defending my turf and defending uh, every single viewer who had bought that book. I'm standing here on behalf of the reader who's pissed off that uh, it wasn't what we thought it was. Our readers really remembered this as a significant moment because I don't think they'd ever seen Oprah so angry. She really... I want to see Oprah's anger. I don't want to. I don't want to listen to this lady talk about it. Where can is this? Are we gonna show don't it? tell. Show don't tell. Is this where we get to see it? He deserved that nope. because he had no. Not this been, is just know, narration. Uh, being okay, able to where can I see it for real? Come on, Oprah. Come on, Oprah. Yeah, you're gonna. Maybe have it's better. not available on YouTube. Where's Oprah confronts James Fry? See ya tomorrow, Allie. Oh, uh, maybe we can't see it on here. You ran over Oprah. <laughs> um, but basically she got she got she confronted him. Um so let's see. Do, 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 do. So she had him on to find out. So during a heated televised debate. Oprah forced him to admit that he had indeed lied about spending time in jail and that he had no idea whether he had two root canals without painkillers or not, despite devoting several pages to describing them in excruciating detail. So I think this dude, like, doesn't remember a lot of his life due to the drugs, so he just made up a bunch of outrageous stuff that he's like, that could have happened, I don't remember. That could have happened, sure. Yeah, which is uh, not how memoir is supposed to work. Uh, so she brought out his publisher to defend her decision to classify the book as a memoir and forced the publisher to admit that she had done nothing to check the book's veracity, despite the fact that her representatives had ensured Oprah staff that the book was indeed nonfiction and described it as brutally honest in the press release. Um, so that... Um, but Savvy... being called said that Oprah annihilated him. That's wild. Yeah? We can't forget quality control. <laughs> Quality control. <laughs> Cannot forget why we need publishing for, for quality. Quality control. Guys, every time someone someone comes up to me and tells me that the big publishing companies, they need to exist for quality control in literature, especially if they bring up Simon and Schuster, I just point them to the straight girl's guide to sleeping with chicks. Just there's so many pro like people bring up, but yeah, if you buy a self-published book, you don't know if it's going to be bad. And I'm like, yeah, if you buy a traditionally published book, 
You don't know any, like, dude, look at all this. You don't know if nonfiction traditional You don't know if nonfiction's going to be fiction. You don't know if the straight girl's guide to sleeping with chicks is is going to, is going to pop up. You don't know if you're like, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. Life's like a traditionally published book. You don't know what you're going to get. Don't know what you're going to get. Exactly. Um, so guys, we have too many, two more books to get oh wait the man who rewrote his life let's take a look a little more at james fry first before we go into oh wait vela launched yesterday guys kindle vela launched so are we i think we have the first three or four chapters of the success rule available on vela is that right i thought we made i thought we had two maybe three i don't i know we don't have four so you can read if there's three you can read them for free because you can always read the first three chapters for free on vela so you can read our chapters for free and then we'll add some more chapters as we go because we've stopped writing it for a little while while we were waiting for vela to launch um adventure rin says on a side note from muscle building i booked up pretty fast using a curling bar with increasing weights all right i'll check that out i'll check that out i'll um look at some tutorials for that um so here we go the man who rewrote his life this is james james frey fry something like that the man who wrote his life um did steve larson write this article what it gave me girl with dragon tattoos title vibes so so oh the girl oh i made a joke okay i got you i made a joke i get you i get the joke i get it now um, so this, this is this funny. is like Oprah. Oprah didn't do anything wrong here. She in fact confronted him and was like, "What are you doing?" So when Oprah raved about his memoir, the book became a publishing sensation. Then it emerged that he had made large made large chunks of it up, and America was outraged. So this is him in um, this is his interview that he gave about this. Lying became a part of my life. I lied if I needed to lie to get something or get out of something. So I guess in the book, he says, I lied all the time. So I guess people could expect that in his book, he would also be lying. But wait, we have a, he just started a new genre. It's a unreliable narrator nonfiction. Well, isn't that a, yeah, that is, that is a thing. If you say like, I'm an unreliable narrator in my memoir, but does that get you out of uh, lying? I don't know. I I mean, here's the, if he, if he actually was addicted to drugs, then, I mean, this is probably the healthiest uh, a way of conning people compared to like the other ways I've heard of, yeah. of drug users um, trying to get money out of others. <laughs> At least he entertained them. Okay, well, man, I don't know what this this type of writing right here is. You start at the outskirts of his beard, your eyes following the curve of his chin, winding their way through the soft-colored bristles and down the paled flesh of the cheek below. You are searching for clues, for a scar, for the crisscross of 41 stitches that sewed up a hole in his cheek big enough to poke a finger through. You are hunting for signs of the assembly of injuries, a broken nose, knocked out teeth, a fractured eye socket, incurred by falling face first down a fire escape in Michigan while high on crystal meth, crack cocaine, and cheap wine. In a conversation with James Trey, you look for proof. Oh, dude, that's actually a real, that's a good opening. That got so much better. Um, I love how it's crystal meth, crack cocaine, and cheap wine. I just, I just love how it's cheap wine. Cheap wine. He didn't drink expensive wine. He didn't splurge on the wine. Why? Why would you be drinking expensive wine? <laughs> if you're doing cheap drugs, then save your expensive wine for when you're doing expensive drugs. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of doing, uh, uh, of like, Someone who will go, I don't know, pennies for the drugs and then just open up a $2,000 bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> really so, brings out the tonics or the tannics, whatever they fucking are. Really brings so out the wine. It's a memoir of the author's time as a 23-year-old alcoholic, drug addict, and former criminal in a rehabilitation center in the American Midwest. Over the course of 500 pages, he wrestles a swarthy rage. He names the fury, battens down his cravings, sprays spit and snot and blood and urine, recounts his misdemeanors, finds friendship, and falls in love. In one memorable scene, he undergoes back-to-back root canal surgery, but as he is in withdrawal, he is forced to weather the entire procedure without anesthetic, pressing his pain into two tennis balls until his fingers crack. Oh, God. Which didn't really happen, apparently, so he made that up. The tannins. I wanted to correct what I said before. The tannins. That's what they're the called. Tannins, Thank you. And then... Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. The trick is it wasn't written by Lincoln, author being the protagonist when folks think it's their business if it's true. <laughs> um, I would totally read Fever Dreams, a memoir. 
So appar oh, apparently he was the first living author to be chosen in more than three years when he was chosen on Oprah's show. Um, maybe that's because the last living author was that it seemed to be Jonathan Franzen, who uh, was an asshole about it. So maybe Oprah's like, I'll choose some dead authors for a while. They can't be rude about they can't it. Disappoint us. <laughs> Imagine she picks Lovecraft and like, it just comes out then that he has all these, or like, or, like she picked Dr. <laughs> Seuss. Just as like, <laughs> his... Like, ah, oh, fuck. So it says then in January of well, this year when this was written was 2006. So January of 15 years ago, something even more unexpected happened. The investigative smoking gun website claimed that a million little pieces was far from honest and asserted that a six week investigation had cast doubt on some of the details in Frey's memoir, including his incarceration, the severity of his crimes and his experiences in rehab. It told how the site's reporters had contacted the police department in Licking County, Ohio, and questioned Sergeant Dave Dudgeon about Frey's arrest in October. Um, in the account of the incident in a million little pieces, Frey stacked to the rafters with crack and alcohol, hits a police officer with his car, reacts violently to arrest, is charged with assault, the deadly weapon, among other things, and ends up sentenced to an 87-day jail term. Judgeon reveals that, in fact, the author was issued with two traffic tickets, one for driving under the influence and one for driving without a license, and received misdemeanor criminal summons for having an open bottle of beer in his vehicle. He spent five hours in police custody. <laughs> See, so he's just basically like, it's this is basically like his life is r slash that happened. Like, he just like took uh, every time a, a kind of bad situation happened, he's like, but what if it was actually like worse here and it was worse here and here and I acted worse here? And then this worst thing happened here. Then, yeah, this guy is just r slash that happened in a human. Um, it's also just a good way to make it seem like what you did is not that big of a deal. Because then, like, everyone digs up all the dirt on your past. And, oh, the, dude, this is the 4D chess of it. He was really embarrassed with his past. And people thought he did all these horrible things. So he was like, okay, fuck it. If y'all are going to think so low of me, I'm going to make sure I go out like in a blaze of glory. So he really just amps up everything that happened in his life. And then when they dig up the dirt and see what really happened, they're like, Psh, this guy's done nothing. I mean, compared to what he wrote in his book, he's practically an angel. Yeah. Well, except that now he's known even worse because he's known as a, a big swindler, a big liar that conned everybody. Which is arguably better than what he was known as before. I'm not going to say definitely better, but you, you can make the argument that's better than what he was known as it's before. Essentially, yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's not like he was work. It's, it's not like he was contributing to society or working a regular job. I mean, he was still very self-destructive and it sounds like hurting those around him. So so let's see what he said in he the leveled interview up. he did. He said, um, so he said uh, they had reporters camped out. He couldn't leave for a while. After 10 weeks of relentless media security or scrutiny, Gray, his wife, and their young child left New York for France, where they remained for two months. Never expected anything like that to happen. I'm a writer. I never expected to be recognized on the street. I never expected to get that kind of coverage. I never expected to sell as many books as I had. Um, so, yeah, dude. This is wild. This whole situation. So yeah, this was definitely like, I like that Oprah, so this wasn't Oprah's fault, Oprah confronted him. I wish we could watch the clip, but it seems to not be available online anywhere. Um, oh, I find this difficult to believe. I mean, we live in a world where people are dying for alien abduction stories. You could absolutely write more interesting lies. Yeah, it makes me wonder, should I write lies about myself? I mean, I won't, but like- Do you have a good alien abduction story? I could probably make one up. That would be a good one. Yeah, and that, that would get you brings on up a good point is that with social media, this uh, would this kind of of uh, ruse of a fake memoir be able to happen as easily with social media now? I think only if you wrote a story about something that happened in pre-social media times, like if you were like back in the '80s, this happened to me. Um, but if you wrote a story where you were like back in 2010, this happened to me, then people would probably start trying to fact check it on the internet, unless it was something unrelated. Um. Yeah, dude, this is such a wild story. So, um, it would also be easier to lie with social media now. So it'd be uh, easier to, to maybe make this feel like it happened. Apparently his agent and publisher also let him go. Well, because I think it's according to this, they felt, um, that he lied to them too, because I don't think he told them that he'd embellish the story either. So, 
I understand why he felt kind of sad. Um, so he said, my agent said her integrity was questioned, but it wasn't questioned enough for her to stop taking the money. Well. Oh, dude, yeah. conspiracies would sell. If you have a fake story of like how the Rothschilds tried to bring you up to space for to run a laser that controls agriculture on the planet, that mm -hmm. will sell. Yeah. So that's that's the interesting debate that this whole thing sparked about what needs to be true and memoir. Now, I want to take a look at the whole thing with Jennifer Weiner, which I'm going to pull up. <laughs> Wiener. Uh, I have to pee, so I'm going to run to the bathroom. RK, can you start talking about Jennifer Weiner once I pull up the article? The title is When White Feminists Get Honest, They Also Need Empathy, which is an interesting title. So here's the article. I'll zoom in so that you Okay, y'all. So let's talk or about Weiner's talk empathy. About, you could just talk about Weiner's or the chat or something, but I will be right back. Okay. Do Weiner's need empathy? Debate. Let's see this. People love a train wreck. Queen, it freaks me out a little bit too. We live in a world where we have to fact check people's lives. And that is sad and creeps me out. Yeah. How much apathy is healthy? Debate. RK giggles whenever he says Wiener. <laughs> yeah, because Wiener's funny. Wiener is a very funny name. Um, and it's okay. We all have to laugh at our names. Uh, the empathy of wieners. Wiener filibuster. Go. Oh, dude, wiener filibuster. That sounds really hard. Ah, too many dick jokes. It's just gross. It came from such an entitled place to start with. I have a, I have a hard time having empathy for <laughs> wiener, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a hard time empathizing with wieners, too. Um. They can be such dicks. They get really cocky. I don't know, I gotta log some of these jokes. Why isn't pre-order up for Sean? But I don't fucking know. I... Ask me about my wiener. Me looking for links to link. <laughs> I mean, aren't we just all trying to either figure out or avoid knowing how the sausage is made. Y'all, dicks are funny though. Like, I really do feel like that. And uh, farts are pretty funny too. I don't know. We, we grow up, we get college degrees, but we still all laugh at poop and genitalia. That's That's one thing I'm pretty certain about right now. And it's cause, just because just they're objectively funny. Like, it's okay to say a dick is objectively funny. When you look at it, it's just, it's objectively funny. The fact that balls are outside the body is objectively funny. Like, I, I, John Stewart once said that he could disprove intelligent design with one word, scrotum. I thought that was hilarious. No joke. <laughs> it, it's, it's the furthest thing from sexy to call it that. But I will say a wiener can be cuter than a dick probably because like a wiener is for something that I imagine someone would put a little hat on. You don't put a hat on a dick. Lunatics also sell if they actually like, yep, that's absolutely true. I mean, WWE has been really uh, pushing that storyline for decades. Lunatics are always their, some of their top uh, names. Savvy returns like, so how far did you get? We are like, we never made it past the D jokes. Yes, welcome to class. Y'all got D's. Does this channel have a P.O. box? No. And now I'm scared. Because we're talking about Oprah and someone wants to mail us something. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if this is the woman who did that. I can't believe I missed the stream until now. I can't believe it either. We make sausage here at home. So we do know what's in it. You don't put a hat on it. <laughs> I read a wiener book at Oprah's recommendation. I have not. Have you seen my wiener? Reminds me of a song I heard at the Ren Fair entitled, Have You Seen My Cock? About an interestingly patterned rooster. That sounds fantastic. I've never been to a Ren Fair. They look like fun. I just, 
I don't know. I'm I'm a lazy person. These nuts. One person on Twitter. Also, Adorkables, what's up? I appreciate all your Jimmy Neutron references. It's nice to have you on the stream. One person on Twitter had this weird storyline I wanted to turn into a book. It was a religious nut <laughs> talking about the end of the world, about Satan's bitches that were genderless and actually angels. That's interesting. I love crazy in books. I'm currently reading Michael Wolf's Landslide, scary stuff. I'm currently reading a couple books. I am reading. Let me pull it up right now. I'm trying to finish Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, I'm really close to finishing The Power of Habit and The Tao Te Ching. Tao Te Ching. I'm not going to try that. I'm, I'm reading the book on Taoism. Hey, y'all. Just got to catch up on comics. Uh, comments. Comics. I'm struggling today. I worry about using <laughs> the word dick because we know people go by dick. Not sure. Yeah, but parents know better than to name their kids rich. Like, if, if you're going by dick, you're asking to get laughed at, but you're also diffusing the tension in the room. People will probably think that you're confident like a dick, so we're good. Eva gave us a super sticker. Thank you so much. We Thank love you, you Eva. So much, Eva, you're the best. Um. Oh, Lee E wants to know where they can send this book to you. Uh, send me a DM. I'll, I'll let you know. I, although I think someone might already be sending me the money book, but I will check on that because I am excited to review all Jen Sincero's books. Oh my God, RK, there is one here. There's, who's here? All right. Uh, I don't, do I need to catch up on anything? Um, like Satan's bitches infected people to make them also into Satan's bitches via sex, like an STD satanic weapon. I don't know what's going on at all here. Okay, to be fair, I did not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about Jennifer Weiner. When no one when... likes a tattletale, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it says Jennifer Weiner, the author of novels including Good and <laughs> Good, Jennifer Weiner wrote Good in Bed. <laughs> okay. Good in Bed and In Her Shoes has had immense success over the course of her writing career. In Her Shoes was adapted into a popular film starring Cameron Diaz, Tony Collette, and Shirley MacLaine. Her books hit the bestseller list like clockwork. She has over 100,000 Twitter followers, and she routinely pens essays about feminism in the literary world for outlets like the New York Times. Sounds like Jennifer Weiner is living her best life. What went wrong? <laughs> one might be forgiven that thinking that Weiner has found not just enough success for one author's lifetime, but a pretty enviable amount. I mean, 100,000 Twitter followers is not that great. I have like 3,000, and I don't, I don't feel like I'm successful enough for my lifetime. I really wish she was named Richard. Richard Wiener, the author of the novel Good in Bed. Dick Wiener. Dick Wiener. <laughs> Dude, I really want to have like someone in the Cancel Shop Boston for a speed name something like Richard Grabber. <laughs> okay. Well, because, like, we have so much room for stuff in the sequel. Maybe that's what maybe that's what Elise Shiloh's dad is named. Is Richard Okay. Richard name, Grabber? Dick no, Bear, Dick Grabber. His name is Richard Wiener. And her original name was Elise Weiner, but her middle name was Shiloh. So she changed it to going by Elise Shiloh because if she went by Elise Weiner, she would get made fun of in school. What's for the it. French word for dick? Because he's he's a Quebec separatist. A Quebec so we have to make sure he's French. Everyone in the chat, who knows the French word for dick? Um okay. So last week, Oprah announced that her October book club selection would be a memoir about the emotional journey of a life and mother, Glennon Doyle. Glenn, oh, Glennon Doyle Melton. Oh, dude, this was before Glennon Doyle was divorced and then married a woman. Uh, that's wild. It's wild to look at this. Um, it's wild to look at like life on the timeline of gay romance. <laughs> Well, this was before. Oh, this was a memoir about how Glennon Doyle discovered her husband being unfaithful. But it worked out okay because now she's with a woman. Hope her wife isn't unfaithful. Um, I just kind of want to like break down the timeline as with, with with gay romances, like as far as when this major historical event happened, who was sleeping with who? Right, that's what's important to know because then you'll be like, oh wait, this happened when these people were still together. Oh damn. I already measure time in nine month increments instead of one year because I I like to know like if someone's been dating. 
I don't care how many years they've been together. I care about how many like babies could have been conceived. Cause like, so, so have you, have y'all been dating for two babies, 18 months? Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. So it's, it's, a, it's a much more actionable measurement of time. Well, if our sh our show has been going on for five months, so we're uh, not even a baby yet, dude. We're not a baby yet. If our once our within the next four months, our show will have been old enough to have been birthed. Just Ava, do you really think I care about accuracy with this? It's about the music. Okay, no, you're right. I'll do ten months from now on. Thanks, just Ava. Um, so Wiener, whose own memoir, Hungry Heart, Hungry Hungry Hippos, will be published in October, uh, had thought her book might be the pick. Oh, so she was not picked for Oprah's book club. Glennon Doyle was picked instead, and Jennifer Wiener's upset about this. Got it. So she had thought her book might be the pick, though she had been publicly critical of Oprah in the past. Did no one learn anything from Jonathan Franzen that when you are rude to Oprah, she's like, sorry, I don't have time for you anymore. So she was like, I've been, I shit talked Oprah, but Oprah might still pick my book for the book club, right? Jennifer. Pretty, pretty sure Oprah would, have, like, um, if she's not afraid to say, to do, uh, interview the royal family and humiliate the royal family, she doesn't care about some author. Right, right. Uh, she took to Facebook to vent her disappointment that another woman's memoir of marriage and motherhood had been selected and later had, uh, Deleted. Okay, I can't. Calling Glennon Doyle by the name Melton is weird to me. I'm going to call her Glennon. Uh, she then posted a more measured post detailing her reaction, writing, I'm not going to lie and tell you I haven't been really sad about this. Oh, dude, here's the thing. I should, every time Oprah doesn't pick one of my books for her book club, I should uh, go on social media and get mad about it to drum up attention. Like, well, once again, I was not Oprah's book club pick. Cause like, that's what she's doing. Who expects to be Oprah's book club pick? That happens to so few people. So that's what, that's what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to make videos every time a new book comes out, like the next month, they'll be like, well, Oprah didn't pick me for her book club this month. So I'm pretty upset about that, actually. And I'm going to shit talk the author. On, should I do that? Or would that, like, would people take that seriously and think that I'm going like Gabby Hanna levels? I don't know. Why don't you run another community tab like OnlyFans? <laughs> um, run a community tab poll and be like, should I make videos being mad that I didn't get selected for Oprah's book club every time? I, I think it's funny because I'm such a small time author that it obvi I obviously never would be. So that's why that. it's that's why it's funny to me. But I don't know if people will think I'm being serious about it. So I don't know. I mean, you just got to do what's funny to you because you want to laugh when you're getting canceled. <laughs> yeah. No. I would never. No, yeah. Uh, so. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I um, think congratulations to just Ava for, or Eva for being with her husband for 27.4 babies. Do we round up or round down babies? I don't know. Oh, you know what, Queen? That's a good idea. I'll do one parody video. I'll parody. Uh, maybe I'll do a video. Guys, maybe I should do a video about Oprah's book club because this is so interesting that I feel like I could make a whole deep dive video on this and my introduction can just be, be me getting mad about it and it can be a skit. That's probably a better idea. All right, guys. Hold on. I need to add this to my my uh, YouTube video schedule. That is I got to film the question. one about Grant Cardone using his kids to give speeches at the 10X conference. He's Grant Cardone, we used to think he was such a cute dad. No longer. No longer. Uh, I think he's adorable. He's getting his kids so rich. He indoctrinates his kids in hustle culture. Everyone indoctrinates their kids. My parents indoctrinated me. I just think that they indoctrinated me with some not horrible qualities. All right. That's <laughs> not my YouTube schedule. I'm going to do an Oprah's Book Club video. This was, I'm so glad we all came to this conclusion together. Also, congrats to Steva. And... Bad Astra, I really respect her ability to uh, come to decisive answers on complex philosophical questions so rapidly. That is the sign of a true genius. Okay, yeah, the parody skit. I'm glad we got to this point. I'm glad we all got to this point uh, together. I have such a packed YouTube schedule for the next month. I better get on some of these uh, some of these videos. T today I got to edit my video about I did one about the New York Times bestseller list for this Friday, and it's about, is the New York Times bestseller list legit or is it a scam? The answer is a little bit of both. Legitimately a scam. 
Um, so I did a video about that. Okay. So, okay. So, so Jennifer Weiner says, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I haven't been really sad about this, or there isn't a voice in my head, a small, sad voice that sees a slim, blonde, traditionally attractive woman getting something great and thinks, oh, well, of course, of course, that's why no one wants someone who looks like you in their magazine or on their TV show. It's crazy and untrue. And I never let a friend talk to herself that way, but there it is. All right. This woman is not bad looking based on this. I mean, that's her making kind of a goofy face, but she looks pretty normal. So... It's one of the least flattering shots that could have used her and she doesn't look horrible. Yeah, let me let me see. Let me just find a picture of Jennifer Weiner and see if we can see what she looks like because I think this whole like thing about going on about appearance. Um I like the the chat is fully committing to this measurement of relationships based on babies. It's just one step closer to us being in a cult or controlling how they perceive time. So this Jennifer Weiner is absolutely she looks fine. This is Jennifer Weiner. What the fuck is she complaining about? I understand having body image issues. Body dysmorphia is a bitch for me. And I've talked about that in the past that like, I, there's a reason that I constantly am like, I need to get bigger. I need to get my muscles bigger because in my mind, I, I either have to get skinny or I have to get masculinized. And it's, I'm not, I'm not trying to have therapy right now, but like, I, I get the body dysmorphia thing and I get having uh, not seeing yourself as beautiful when other people do. I get that. But to make this about appearance is weird because what does Glennon Doyle even look like? Glennon Doyle. There's Glennon Doyle. Glennon Doyle's wife is hot, dude. So Glennon Doyle is blonde but has blonde been the standard for attractiveness in years dude her wife abby is hot as fuck though can we talk about that um anyway i'll, I'll stop being a simp for glennon doyle's wife um good platypus <laughs> journal says i'm a small blonde woman who wants to be an author if i'm ever successful i'm gonna feel like people think i don't deserve it that's the thing it's like why are we judging authors by their appearance? They're literally authors. They're, 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 their appearance has nothing to do with it. So she's over here and is like, oh, it's a skinny blonde lady. And it's like, yeah, Jennifer Weiner, you're you're fairly conventionally attractive too. If you, When you have all of your success, does some lady who is, I don't know, has some other different way of looking say oh my god that was that conventionally attractive lady jennifer weiner did better than me like you can't compare like when you're talking about books comparing by appearance makes no fucking sense i don't know i started lifting so i'd sell more books that's uh there we go well, i guess that's true when i put uh Okay, yeah, see, Bad Astro agrees, dude, Glennon Doyle's wife is hot, but Glennon Doyle's wife is not an author, so who cares? Who cares all that hotness wasted. All? No, 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 when I say who cares, I'm saying who cares for this situation? Who cares? I don't care if you're hot if you don't write books. <laughs> well, dude, I gotta say, when I post my hot gym selfies, I get a lot of, I get a lot of attention on them, which probably helps me in the Instagram algorithm, so then when I post about my books, more people will see them. So maybe there is something to that. Savvy building an army of simps. Exactly. My ar I'm building my army of simps. Not going to do OnlyFans, though. I'll just do hot gym selfies on Instagram and not make money from it. I'll just do that. That'll be more fun. Um, all right. Here we go. Let's continue what happened with Jennifer Weiner because it looks like this is just the start of it. So it she says, wrote, the wife wrote an autobiography. So you, you can. Oh, you Abby Wambach. She's a professional. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was Abby. Yeah. Liar. Yeah. She plays uh, professional women's soccer. I didn't yeah, know she, she wrote a memoir also... about that. Well, I guess, dude, I guess I have to read it because she's so hot, which this therefore proves Jennifer Weiner was correct. I, I think read we also have the women's same... books more often. I, I think we also had the same hometown. Oh, really? That's cool. Let me double check that. Nope, she's from Rochester. She, we grew up close to. You're not grew up. She's older than me, but close to each other, but not um, not the same town. Rochester's pretty. Well, that's awesome, dude. I mm, yeah. So now, proud of my geographic I'm birth location. Jennifer Weiner correct by being like, oh, I gotta read Abby Wambach's book now because she's hot. 
But I'm not going to read Glenn. I actually am going to read Glennon Doyle's book, but it's not it's not because of her appearance. I didn't know what she looked like. I'm going to read it because someone gifted it to me on Audible after I did the video about Rachel Hollis's divorce. Because a lot of people brought up that Rachel Hollis chose to get divorced after reading Glennon Doyle's book and being inspired to get divorced because she wrote about getting divorced. So um, I decided I'll read it, but it sounds kind of tedious, like stereotypical self-help stuff. Um... So wait, Rachel Hollis's life really is measured on what self-help book she was reading at that time? Kind of seems that way. I can't, I mean, allegedly. I don't know. Are we all NPCs in a game of self-help books? <laughs> well, okay, so here I watched this. Okay, I, this is a side note, but the NP, us being NPCs reminded me. I watched this documentary about John McAfee. And about it talked about how when he used to work for a railway company... He used to take, he used to drop acid every morning before going to work on the railroad. And then one day he got it, he snorted an entire bag of DMT at once and had this wild trip from it. And then they found him behind a dumpster later and he never worked for the railway company again. But like he had so much DMT that throughout the rest of his life, he sometimes would start thinking that he was still on the DMT trip and that the past few years of everything that had happened to him wasn't real. And so all the comments were like, guys, we're all just, we're all just fake people existing inside of John McAfee's DMT trip. So when I think about being an NPC, if I'm going to be an NPC, it's because I'm existing in John McAfee's uh, DMT trip. And I think we should all, that's something we can all learn from. Uh, don't do DMT at work. I'll be right probably back. Probably at all. Process this. All right. Oh, okay. Well, Bad Astra, Bad Astra says that Rachel Hollis is hot. Uh, RK would agree with you on that. Um, I, I think she's, I think she's conventionally attractive. I think she's pretty. I definitely do. I don't, I wouldn't say I'm sexually attracted to her, which is good because that would be weird if I would, if I were attracted to someone I made that many exposed videos on, but I do think she's, she's pretty. Yes. Um, so Queen says Bad Astra, you are good looking. That's true. Bad Astra is uh beautiful. If you watch her channel, her she's 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 very pretty. Um so let's just all compliment each other and talk about how beautiful we all are. Uh but let's go back to Jennifer Weiner actually. So some readers took umbrage with Wiener's very public airing of her disappointment, especially since she worked through her feelings of self-described jealousy by undermining the accomplishment of another female writer. I agree to be like, oh, she's successful. And she didn't, she didn't say outright, I think she's successful because she looks better. But she was like, oh, I hate another more attractive woman, which whether you think Glennon Doyle is more attractive than Jennifer Wiener is a matter of opinion. So I don't know. A feminist consciousness isn't fair, a fair standard to hold on every woman writer, but Wiener has made a name for herself beyond her fiction. And I don't, okay, wait, I don't know if this is going to come up in this because it talks about white feminism, but I think people, people, first of all, assuming that being skinny and being blonde is the standard of attractiveness is a white, is a white, like a white supremacist ideal, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. So... I, I think that's got to be part of it, <laughs> right? So, uh, so is that going to come into this at all? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so she's gotten in debates with a um, man's man authors like Jonathan Franzen. Well, that's fair. Jonathan Franzen, who is a, a nasty dude. So, um, okay. I kind of respect Jennifer Weiner for getting into a debate with Jonathan Franzen. Uh, so he, Okay, here's the thing, dude. This is this is a legit feminist issue right here. Why is Jonathan Franzen continuing to get success after he's such an uh, asshole, right? So it says, his anointing as the great American literary hope with the 2010 publication of Freedom struck her as unfair and used on the lack of respect given to so-called chick lit in columns and interviews in a number of outlets. So, dude, I would have I started beef with Jonathan Franzen, too. If I ever meet him, I'm going to start beef with him. I get it. I get it. Um... <laughs> okay sammy's always been super hot but her new look is hardcore big titty tomboy and it's truly gonna build a simp army that's the thing i was so happy when i learned that the big titty tomboy gf was like a thing because i was like oh shit i've got my being hot niche right there <laughs> 
Oh my God. Um, I, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. That's the, if I had done OnlyFans, my name was going to be big titty tomboy GF on OnlyFans. And that was going to be my niche. Um, was probably just going to be me taking off sports bras after the gym was <laughs> and seeing how much boobs popped out. That would have been my only fans entirely. Um, so, okay. Kat Benson's talking about that. Yes. The skinny blonde ideal as attractiveness is, is, does stem from white supremacy. And she did, she, uh, when we did intermittent fasting week, Kat recommended this book to us. It's by Dr. Sabrina Strings. It's called fearing the black body, the racial origins of fat phobia. And uh, if Kat recommends it and she is a licensed dietitian, then I will say that it's probably a fantastic book. And I did get it on Audible. So that will be one of the next ones I'm listening to. So, um, yes. OK. I'm, and I'm wondering if that's where the white the white feminist thing is going to come in, because that's my thought. But let's see where it goes next. Um, so and yet it, they, they got to stop calling Glennon Doyle Melton because. I cannot, I cannot see her as, as, uh, as ha having a man's last name. It just doesn't work. Not after she has such a hot wife now. Um, so her apologetic post carelessly used Glennon Doyle as a convenient scapegoat for Wiener's own admitted insecurities, implying that the other woman was tapped by Oprah because of her looks rather than because of the value of her work. Whereas Wiener was overlooked because, quote, nobody wants someone who looks like you in their magazine or on their TV show. She adds it's crazy and untrue, but apparently only she's being too hard on herself. Uh, so the website Jezebel published an article on the Facebook confession headline, Jennifer Wiener is winging out over <laughs> Oprah's newest book club pick, which is fair. Though not being picked for Oprah's book club is such a weird thing to get upset about because that is the default. The default is that you don't get picked for Oprah's book club. You usually go with, like when I put out a new book, I never have any expectation that it's going to get picked for Oprah's book club ever. So I can't imagine being disappointed about that because how is that anyone's expectation in the first place this is just funny to me i don't know i i, I sort of support universal basic oprah <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> we, we all get a little oprah everybody gets oprah Every, you get a little car you get a little car. you get on the book club and you get to be on the book club and you're on the book club yeah i, I think universal basic oprah makes sense Dude, I'm loving this topic that we're doing today so much. I'm so excited to actually make a deep dive video about this. I mean, I just love the format. I think we I think we play well off of each other when we laugh at articles together. Guys, if Oprah doesn't pick 90s kids for the book club, I am going to I'm going to go on a rampage. I am going to go on Instagram and call everyone in my life a narcissistic bitch. I thought I, I misread this for a second. I, I thought this said, I know this is my own bias, but I can't sit, I can't with white upper class or white upper middle class entitlement na people named Wiener. I thought oh, it was like super specific. That's super specific. <laughs> like, I know this is my bias, but this specific woman, I cannot deal with. <laughs> it would be like, I, this might just be biased, but I cannot stand bisexual white Polish women in Chicago named Savvy. <laughs> Damn. No, 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 that was an example. I, was, I kept, I know, I kept thinking, I was like, okay, you know, it kept filtering down and down and down. I'm like, okay, before you got to the name savvy part, I'm like, okay, maybe there's, maybe there's like a few of those. Oh, I, I had, I had to clarify savvy because it's, it's, it's Chicago. So there's a lot of gay Polish people. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. There's a lot of Polish people and a lot of gay people in Chicago. And then where's the, how much of that is an overlap? I don't know. Yeah. Polish felt redundant when I was talking about Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's pretty big Irish Chicago population too. So you got to make it clear. You're not talking about the Irish population. You're right. The I Polish got South side and the Irish South side and it's different. Yeah. One had, one was made with shameless. Um, Okay, so so Wiener fired back with another pace pace. Oh my God! So Wiener Wiener's firing back. Oh my God! Here's the thing, though. Wiener, I will say that I do think that Wiener is getting more social media frenzy. Uh, well, I guess I can't say social media frenzy because I was gonna say that 
she's getting more hate than Jonathan Franzen and then there's a sexist element there. And I think there is, but it's not fair to compare because Jonathan Franzen's book did come out in 2001 and there was no social media yet. So I think it also has to do with the different time periods. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We, Wiener fired back. <laughs> so, it's just um, so much funnier. <laughs> Wiener fired back with another Facebook post arguing that Jezebel's critique of her as wigging out fell in line of sexist tropes of emotional women as crazy, threatened her comfort and the comfort of other... Okay, dude, you're she, dude, you're going too far. You're doing too much, Jennifer. I'm not laughing at you because you're a woman. I'm laughing at you because you're named Wiener. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 Wiener spiring back is not a phrase I expected in other drama. <laughs> now let listen to her be like, my name's pronounced Weiner, actually. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Looks like a Wiener. Wiener. <laughs> also, does Weiner make it better? <laughs> Weiner wines. I mean, that that's an accurate descriptor in that case, yeah. So that she's like, I'm sorry brain. that... I'm so oh, she's, she's sarcastically apologizing on behalf of other people. Girl, stop apologizing. I'm sorry that Jezebel writer or whoever wrote her headline seems to have confused honest and unhappy for crazy because that's the kind of nonsense that makes it okay for men, be they dudes on the be they dudes on the street. I know that that's a grammatically correct sentence. It's just funny to read it. Be they dudes on the street. Oh, wiener. You should, you should tweet it. You should tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> be they dudes on the street or the head of the rnc okay now she's taking it too far those are the two genders those the two genders the are dudes on the, the street RNC. and head of the rnc those are the two male genders the two male genders the two female <laughs> genders are skinny skinny and blonde and um Honest and unhappy. Those no, no, no. Where, where, where's the milk at a Bernie rally or at home raising a family? Oh, yeah. That's, well, the two overall genders, the fact that we classify genders as women and men is wrong in the first place. The two genders are. No, because we have so many genders. At a Bernie Sanders rally or at home raising a family. Those are the only two genders to begin with. So. We had, we had two genders earlier in this chat too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sometimes the two genders just change over time. Look, there's an infinity, construct. but it's in pairs, okay? <laughs> so see, dude, she's taking it to a hundred on this. She's she's taking she's turning this all the way up. She took something way too far. She says it's what makes women with postpartum depression post pretty pictures of their babies in the afternoons and kill themselves at night. Jennifer. I think she needs to work this out in therapy because she just took it way too far. She's like, I got mild criticism on a website. This is what leads to all it like Jennifer. No, this is this is your this is your issue to work Oof. out. Oof. Imagine a dude on the street. Be they dude on the street be or at the RNC the saying be that. They like, on the be they dudes on the street. Kill yourself. Dude, okay, wow. we've got. I, we need to get our soundboard soon because I, I really want to have. We, I, we gotta, we gotta have that, uh, that thing of Tim Pool saying pouring milk on yourself at Bernie Sanders rallies or at home raising a family. We need that. We need that. Right? Those are the two genders. We need that to have as the two genders. We need and the two uh, genders of pouring milk on yourself are be they dudes on the street or a dude at the RNC. <laughs> because every yeah, two I genders has a point. Term. Oprah is a woman, so. Why is she so mad? She's like, this is sexist discrimination. Like, Oprah is a woman, dude. There were no men involved in this in the first place. Also, I'm pretty sure the article that was written by the Jezebel writer, I think the Jezebel writer was also a woman. Men did not even come into this. Like, I understand if she wants to make a commentary on like the differences of how women are treated publicly as a whole due to like social expectations, sure, but like these are like she's just right now she is actively criticizing other women tag your tag yourself on the oh wait hold on yeah i tweeted this the other day my gender is a soft butch american girl doll with a pleasant company neck tattoo that is that's actually my gender i don't know what my gender is i just know my pronouns are 10 x that's i think that should be both of our pronouns we're the same gender so you also have to be an american girl doll no i'm good <laughs> you don't you don't define me <laughs> Tag yourself, I'm the milk. Amy! You used to work at Pleasant Company? Are you 
Are you serious? Do you know Pleasant Roland? She's literally my woman in business idol. Amy, when are we going to talk about your work at Pleasant Company? It was before Mattel bought them out, right? Dude. Amy. Amy! Dude, you just sent me on a, a frenzy. Okay, I need to I need to get Dude, have you heard of Amy's like entire resume before? It's insane. I've heard I know some of Amy's jobs. Okay, Pleasant Company is the company that produced American Girl dolls uh, before they were bought out by Mattel. Pleasant Company was founded in 1986 in Wisconsin. And um, they were founded by Pleasant Roland, who was a toy creator. And her goal was she wanted to create toys that taught kids about history. So she opened up American Girl, which was she, she founded Pleasant Company named after herself. And then she opened up the American Girl doll toy lines as a mail order catalog uh, where you could um, order. There were three doll options, Molly, Kirsten and Samantha. And they all were from different time periods. Uh, and then it grew from there. Um, Amy, Amy was dude, a Amy's best always friend. been one of my best, <laughs> she's, she's been one of my best internet friends. She's literally the nicest person on the internet, like literally the nicest person on the internet. It's about 18 years ago. I worked there for three years. They closed out. Okay, wait, Amy, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. We should follow Pleasant Roland for a week just because I love her so much. Um, Amanda's pronouns are don't perceive me, but also give me constant validation. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, I should do reviews of all the American Girl books. I've talked about a few of them. I am so excited to read Courtney's newest book. Courtney from 1986 is my gay niece from the 80s. And in her second book, she learns about the HIV crisis. In the back of the book where it tells you about the history of the time, like sometimes I felt like American Girl was getting a little softball recently, but the back of this book was like, in 1986, the HIV epidemic was picking up. Many people thought that it only affected the gay population. And while it did affect them a lot, it actually affected a lot of people from a lot of demographics. Ronald Reagan was the president and he didn't do anything to help. <laughs> it was like, whoa, whoa, American Girl. Dude, American Girl's great. Oh, yes. My birthday, 30th birthday at the American Girl Store, September 2022. Get ready. I'll see you some other time. No, you're coming. Um, <sighs> Not a wiener. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So, okay. This is just a whole thing again about authors getting so upset. This is when I made that video about Lauren Huff and Gabby Hanna, who were at the same time lashing out at reviewers. Um, yeah, Amy, would you ever want to come on our show as a guest? Let me know. We could actually do guests tomorrow because we, Oprah does a lot of guest interviews, so we could do a guest interviews day tomorrow. Um, my birthday is September 8th. Um, okay. Tomorrow's not bad. Friday's perfect. Yesterday was my busy, busy, busy day. Okay, so these authors aren't just taking every moment and making it about them. They're digging deep, doing the work to make that self-revelation broadly meaningful and yet pointed in its specificity. There are so many white women speaking honestly and writing confessionally that doing it can no longer be called revolutionary. So when can we step back and ask the question, is raw honesty in the name of female empowerment no longer its own justification? When will audiences hold white women accountable for acting with privileged thoughtlessness toward the less powerful? Wait, when did you act toward the I skipped a paragraph. I shouldn't have done that. Um... I definitely thought that they were going to bring up the white feminism angle from, oh, I guess there's more to this article still. Um, so it talks about Lena Dunham. Um, <laughs> Le Le dude, Lena Dunham's an asshole. But there's about where she sp speculated that NFL player Odell Beckham Jr., who was seated next to her at the Met Gala, didn't speak to her because he didn't find her sexy enough in reality. <laughs> Remember that stupid joke he made? She was like, she was like, I was sitting next to Odell Beckham Jr. And he was like, he, he, he didn't talk to me. And I think that he was looking at me like, is that a woman? That's not what I think a woman looks like. I wouldn't fuck that. And I'm like, dude, he wasn't thinking about your appearance at all. He was just doing his own thing. Like, calm down. <laughs> he was definitely just thinking about like what food he had at home because the food there sucks. 
Right? Like, I can't imagine someone trying to read my mind and overanalyze. Like, and she was like, it was just a joke, guys. Uh, so put that next to Wiener's Facebook post. Oh, you got to hear AG bash the first two seconds. Because, like, he, he didn't watch Girls all the way through, but he's seen the first episode. And he just, he is the funniest guy right I've seen that. the first two episodes. And um, it's funny to watch Kylo Ren doing BDSM sex scenes with Lena Dunham. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I have not seen the first two episodes. I did not know that was happening. Oh, yeah. It happens, like, at the beginning of the second episode. I watched it with my mom. And my mom was like, oh, my God, what is this? I know the first episode of Billions has Paul Giamatti doing BDSM sex with um, a dominatrix. Um, yeah, I'd love to interview. Oh, yeah, Amy, you want to come on tomorrow and do an interview? I want to interview Amy about her her... Her, all her work. Um, so put that next to Wiener's Facebook post and see <laughs> what Wiener, too, emphasizes her own insecurities uh, and all of that shit. Maybe it's about her own insecurities, but even Wiener's apology post in her tweets after taking down the initial Facebook screed held mocking and belittling notes towards uh, Glennon Doyle. I keep forgetting who fucking Melton is. I'm proud of where I am, Wiener writes, and I'm proud of <laughs> not because some big deal grant told the world to read my books or some talk show host annoyed me, but because my books connected with reader. Okay, so now I'm she's like, a little you know TikTok. what, fuck you, you know Oprah, I didn't, you know what, I'm proud of my work, not because Oprah picked it, I'm proud of my work because readers liked it without Oprah picking it, okay, Oprah, okay, Glennon Doyle, oh my god, oh I'm my god. where I am, at the Wiener dangling off the body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aside from a brief apology for misbehaving, there's little empathy in her words for how Glennon might feel hearing her career highlights slightly denigrated in this way, let alone other authors who found critical acclaim rather than commercial success. Uh... This article is just trying really hard to make this a big deal, which it is a big deal, but they're like, they're, I feel like they're just there, it hardly feels like a feminist battle. Like they're trying to overanalyze the situation, but that's okay. It's an article. I'm probably going to do that on my YouTube channel too. As this latest episode hints, the Wiener's brand of feminism sometimes lets slip a glimpse of convenience. When male writers are getting more recognition than she is, she just wants representation for all women. When it's another female writer writing a similar style of book, she still feels resentful that it wasn't her because then blonde women are the truly privileged. When she's called out for tearing down another woman, it's her honesty that is the ultimate feminist virtue. I think this is actually a good point, which is that like, I can call out, what's his name, Jonathan Franzen for being a dick and getting away with it. And like how male writers tend to be able to do that repeatedly over time. Um, but yeah, if I, if like my book isn't selling as well as another person's book and I'd be like, oh, it's because this other author is prettier than me. Like that doesn't make any sense. That's, I don't think that's a good feminist talking point. But again, I'm not the feminist police. Um it's hard to continue to argue that your platform is being used for the benefit of all women when you use it to make snide comments about a woman who was awarded an honor you wanted. Exactly. And dude, Glennon Doyle is a queer woman on top of that, although I don't think that that was known at this time, that Glennon, Glennon Doyle was not straight uh, because she I don't think she had come out yet. Um Dude, Bad Astra is on fire today. Dude, Bad Astra, I love, whenever Bad Astra shows up, I'm like, party is starting. Is Bad Astra and Anna the same person? Because, like, no. I, they're not in this chat together, and Anna's not here, and Anna usually kills it, and Bad Astra's killing it today. Well, where's Heather? Where's uh, Fox and Compass Heather? I miss her. She, she always, her comments are always like, yes, comments on fire. I love her comments. Um, uh, but yeah, so Bad Astra says, I don't want to be uplifted. I want to be uplifted and I happen to be a woman. The unsaid truth. I'm... Bad Astra says, I used to give the patriarchy 20 minutes at events and then just start asking helpless men to dance. Now I don't give anyone any chances and ask all the men. Dude, that's me. Bad Astra, I see why we've been, why we're friends in real life, because I'm, I'm exactly the same way. We had this conversation once where we're like, we were like, 
we are bisexual. Our attraction is to men that we could beat up, women who could beat us up, and all non-binary people. So we have the same preferences, which I love. Party doesn't start to bad astro walks and love it, love it. It's giga covert anti-feminism cringe, I would agree. Oh, apparently Wiener called out the author of this. <laughs> Wiener once called me out. <laughs> Wiener once called me out for attacking her after I wrote a response piece to her 2015 Guardian article about the value of literary criticism, using my disagreement with her column as an example of her alma mater snobbish rejection of her work. We both graduated from Princeton. Okay, so when people are up here like arguing privileges and shit, let's keep in mind that everyone here is like Ivy League educated in the first place like they're, they're already in a different realm for most people and i guess like i gotta acknowledge that i went to a good college too so yeah but good college is an ivy league I, ivy league's not even necessarily about the quality of the ivy league, yeah, ivy league the is a sports conference on the east coast so like th that's the thing no, no, no. all i meant was it's it, it has a fantastic reputa reputation because of its alumni not necessarily the actual teaching that happens on campus true dude the side rant about Ivy Leagues. I just get so frustrated when people talk about Stanford as an Ivy League. They'll be like, "Ugh, this is an Ivy League kid from Stanford. And I'm like, dude, Stanford's what, Pac-12? I'm like, fuck off, Stanford's Pac-12. What are you talking about? Yeah, I... It, you can't say Ivy of the West. It's not Ivy of the West. Ivy of the West think. is not a thing. Yeah. When I went to... Well, I, was, I went to Northwestern. When I was in college, people used to be like, oh, that's the Ivy League of the Midwest. And I was like, that's not a thing. Stop. It's just a really good Midwest school. It's just a good school in the Midwest. <laughs> the Ivy League is on the East Coast. Let them let them have their thing. They have Ivy. We don't. I know it's not. Dude, bad Astro says I walked into college, saw Safi, and thought, yep, that's what I want to be, and made that my life goal. You walked into band campus. That's probably where we met, right? At, at band camp in college. At band we, were camp. Both, we were both in the marching band. Yeah. Sometimes walked band. into band camp, saw Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Stanford is in Division One. A lot of schools are in Division One, though. Division One encompasses uh okay. Ivy's D one. Ivy is D one. Yeah, I was pretty sure Ivy was D one. Yeah, yeah. I Ivy's D one. But yeah, Stanford, yeah, Stanford is Division One, but they're they're Pac twelve. Logan's like, I didn't go to Stanford. Yeah. Chewy's like, I don't know how to read. So anyway, sorry, I'm talking about going on my college conferences rant. I feel like uh, our non-American viewers are probably annoyed by this. So let me continue this whole thing. Yeah, well, we're annoyed by how expensive our education is. So <laughs> we get to talk about it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Jordan Jordan of Bad Astra and I met at a, at a, a band camp party. Every Alto P. Oh yeah, so that was a, that. Okay, that was the thing. Our is our this a is this band, a wiener story? Kind of. Okay. No, our marching band just had a lot of inside jokes. So I played the alto saxophone. The alto saxophones and the tenor saxophones had different cultures and different customs. But we we all the thing about the alto saxophones is we'd all go to the bathroom together. That was our thing. We all peed together. Well, the 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 men went in the men's bathroom. The women went in the women's bathroom. Um, but. We all, every right before every game started, we'd all be like, all right, let's go pee together before the game starts, because then we, we knew we were in for eight hours of physical Not activity. peeing. And well, I mean, I guess we could. It, it's hard to pee when you have a marching band uniform, because they're so, um, there's like the pants go all the way up to your shoulders and have suspenders that connect to the rest of the pants. And then you have a jacket over that, that, that buttons in the back. So if you need to pee, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole process to take it all off. Um, so yeah. Um, so whoever asked, if, here we go. Yeah. D, D1 is sports, not academics. Yeah. D, D1 is for sports. Exactly. Yeah. And the Ivy league is really just a sports conference. It's not as, it's not a measure of how smart the school is. That's not what Ivy league means. They just all happen to be really smart schools. Um, So anyway, it seems like there's a there's a whole thing with Jennifer Weiner being annoying, um, and that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, but yeah, band dude, band uniforms are, are a lot. Um, so 
I didn't even get into the thing about uh, Jennifer Weiner and Jody Picoult and Sarah Dessen dunking on a college student, but maybe I'll put that in when I do a video about this on my channel. So um, anyway, let's uh, wrap it up in let's two minutes. Let's wrap it up. We'll go let's to the top of the hour. Let's wrap it up because I've uh, got to walk Chewy. Um, but I appreciate y'all being here for this. This was such an interesting discussion. Um, RK, what are your thoughts on Oprah's book club? It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like all book clubs. I mean, let's be real. Book clubs end after a month or two because they're just not natural. And so when they don't end after a month or two, you just get the controversies like Oprah's book club. Well, hasn't Oprah's book club been going on for like decades? Yeah. And that's why I'm clearly being sarcastic right here. I don't really have any thoughts on Oprah's book club except for... I have a Facebook. Apparently, we're all entitled Daddy's to book it. Book club, but and I tried to do a thing for a while where people would be like, "So man, you can anyone's welcome in my Facebook group called Savvy's Book Club." Really, all it is is a group for people to post about book related stuff. Normally, I, I I had tried for a few months to do a thing where I was like, "Okay, for this month, we are going to read this book," and it would usually be like if I was planning to review it on my channel, I'd be like, "Let's all read this book together and talk about it." And just not enough people participated in that. And also, like, I got behind on having to finish a book every month because I had so many other things I needed to read. So yeah, that part kind of fell apart. But whatever whatever uh, y'all think, maybe I can do another book club in the future. Or maybe our show could have a book club. Maybe. I mean, we do maybe read we a lot of nonfiction Maybe we should start a book together. club so that we could be... Yeah, I mean, we basically kind of already have a book club, don't we? Because we read a, we read a book. We read a new book pretty frequently. And then yeah. we we talk about it. So we should just, you know what we should do is I should edit a little like musical slide that comes in when we're going to announce whatever book we're reading for what guru we're following that week. And it'll be like book club announcement or something like that so that people will feel like it's an official book club. Yeah, because we'll be one of the only book clubs that exists to not make movies off of the popularity of the book club. Yeah. Um. Cool, cool, cool. Wasn't knocking Reese. I just think she's brilliant. Um. Oh, the book with the gamer. Oh yeah, yeah. Cat. It, that was called uh, Slay. That book was really good. I did a review on that for my channel. It was. Uh, I called it Awesome Gamer Girl Book. This was a book called Slay, and it was about this gamer girl. Well, she was actually she programmed games. She was pro She programmed a VR game. And then the game read, led to a real life murder hap happening. And so all this uh, controversy fallout from it happened. Yeah, that book was really good. I highly recommend it. Um, all right, guys. Um, well, thank you all for being Oh, I heard Warcross is really good. Oh, I haven't read that. It, uh, basically, I heard it's like a better Ready Player One. Yeah, when I read Slay, I felt that like it wasn't it wasn't like Ready Player One and that it didn't take place in the future. Although I think the book would have made a little more sense if it took place in the future because a lot of the technology seemed more advanced than what I'm aware we have now, based on uh, being married to someone who has worked in developing for VR. Um, so it seems that a lot of the stuff in it isn't realistic for what can happen now. So if I imagine that Slay took place a couple years in the future, it it made more sense. So I kind of wish that it had taken place in the future, but I get that she didn't want to do that because a lot of the points of the book were about commentary on the way the world is right now. So it was a little bit, it was a little bit suspension of disbelief. However, uh, it was a really good book and I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, what am I, right now I'm reading, okay, right now I'm reading uh, some anti MLM thriller novels, which are a genre. I didn't know that. I don't think it's like a specific genre. It's not an Amazon category. However, um, two people at the same time sent me novels that they had written about um, like murders happening in pyramid schemes and things like that. Like that's kind of the thing. So I'm calling them anti-MLM thriller novels. So I'm reading a couple of those right now and then I'll be reviewing those on my channel. Someone please write fanfic about Savvy and RK as an unreliable narrator memoir. My, yeah, Bad Astro, you should write it. You should write it, uh, write uh, about our life as, as a, a teenage human, robot. As a teenage robot. <laughs> the unreliable memoir. You can you can ship me with capitalism. <laughs> you can ship RK with Canada as a enemies to lovers kind of thing. Oh God. <laughs> 
And then Canada climaxed and oil came out of the ground. There you go. There you go. See, so this, this story's writing itself. Pretty much. Just makes sense. All right, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow for more Oprah Week. Don't forget that on Friday we will be celebrating 100 episodes, even though we've already passed 100 episodes. It didn't make sense to celebrate it last week. But we're going to celebrate it this week and do giveaways because you get a car and you get a car and you get a car and you get a car, except you're all getting books instead. So <laughs> we will do giveaways then. Thank you all so much for watching us today. Um, see y'all again soon. Keep on supporting small businesses and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye, everyone.